I haven't read the rest of those books. Oh God. This video is gonna be so much more confrontational than I thought it was gonna be. This is bad. This is really bad. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. Today, I'm gonna be exposing myself and showing you guys all of my unread, physically owned books that I have. And um, I can tell you, it's a lot. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, someone in my comment section said something along the lines of like, oh my God, that you have read all of those books that you own. And I was like, <laughs> How sweet that you think so highly of me. It's been so long since I've counted all of my unread books on my TBR, on my physically owned bookshelves, and I am scared to do it, but I feel like I need the confrontation because I always keep on buying books and I keep on setting these goals for myself to not buy as many in this year in contrast to last year, but I keep on doing it. So along with this video of counting how many books I own that I still haven't read yet, I also want to set up a couple of goals and rules for myself to follow in the future. So let me set you up on the tripod and then we'll be showing all of my unread books. <laughs> Of course, the end goal with this video is that hopefully within like a year or so, I will be checking in to see if the number went down, which is what we want, if it stayed the same or if it went up, which is the least favorable scenario of the three. And my goal is to read at least 35 of the books that I already physically owned at the moment of recording this video, because of course I will be hauling books this year, but I will also talk about the rules that I'm setting for myself regarding that. So the rules that I'm putting on myself for hauling books in 2021 is that I can only buy books with like either gift cards or if people sent me one, if I receive them for my birthday, whatever. I just can not spend my own money on books. I just really want to restrain myself and make sure that my physical TBR doesn't get any more out of hand because I also do not have any more space left. My bedroom is more just like a library at this point. So I'd say let's just get started. You guys don't see it because the top of my bookshelf is not on here, but I have two children's classics middle grade box sets on there. Ooh, how am I gonna grab it? <laughs> I haven't taken these off of the shelf in such a long time, so there's definitely a lot of dust on here. And the first books that I'm talking about are The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis, but the thing is, I'm not too sure if I'm actually really that interested in picking up this series anymore, and I bought a whole box set of it. So I will also of course, unhaul some books in the next couple of months. So these are seven books. And the other middle grade box set that I own is that of Roald Dahl, and I have read quite some books. The only books that I still have to read are, do I want to take them out? Well, let's just do it, right? And the ones that I still need to pick up are The Twits, right? Yeah. <laughs> Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and its sequel, which is Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator, Danny the Champion of the World, James and the Giant Peach, and then I have the two, I believe these are like non-fiction books that he wrote, Boy and Going solo. These are the ones that I'm the least interested in. And these are seven unread books again. So now let's have a look at all of the unread physical books that I own, which are on this bookshelf, which is the first bookshelf that I bought a couple of years ago. I think back in 2017, 2016. I only have three books on that shelf that I've already read. So first off, I have Always and Forever Lara Jean by Jennifer Niven. That's not her name, by Jenny Han. <laughs> Confess by Colleen Hoover. I also have Steelheart by Brandon Sanderson and On The Come Up by Angie Thomas, Air Awakens by Elise Kova, Get Alive, Chloe Brown, a very well-beloved book here on book two, Everless by Sarah Holland, One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. This is the book that I'm currently reading. I'm gonna like take all the books into account that I didn't read before 2021 started because I want to look at the progress that I've made from 2021 until 2022, yes. I will also be counting the books that I have read in 2021 already for this list. So this is one that I'm currently reading, but counting it for the purpose of this video. Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gil Honeyman. And the last book that I have on this shelf is The Dream Thieves by Maggie Stiefvater. This is an uncorrected proof that I received after I bought a secondhand hardcover copy. So something went wrong here in the mail, but this is a unique book to have in my collection, which adds 10 books to my unread physical TBR. <gasps> 
I thought let's get you all a little bit closer to the shelves and then that happened. <laughs> I have A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kammerer. The Miseducation of Cameron Post by Emily M. Danforth. The Art of Breaking Things by Laura Simpson. At the Edge of the Universe by Sean David Hutchinson. H Hutching Hutchinson. <laughs> a Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallero. And the book beside that also, which is The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater. Wow, the one and only book that I have read, which is The Wicked Deep. And then we have Crier's War by Nina Farella. The Diviners by Libba Bray. And I was actually lying because I have read What the Day Foretold by Julia Drake, which is the last true poets of the sea. <clears throat> Adding eight books <laughs> to the list, okay. And this is where the filming angle gets a bit tricky. We're on to my blue books. The First 15 Lives of Harry August by Claire North. I'm so interested in the premise of this book because it sounds so good. Made You Up by Francesca Zappia. And I can practically hold up the rest of the shelves because I haven't read the rest of those books. Oh God. This video is gonna be so much more confrontational than I thought it was gonna be. This is bad. This is really bad. <laughs> so these are all the blue books that I own on this shelf and literally the only one that I read in this pile is Misery by Stephen King. And that makes me add 13 more books to my unread physical TBR. Going to the lower shelf, the only books that I've read here are How Hard Can Love Be by Holly Bourne, The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, and Blood for Blood by Ryan Grouding. Adding one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten books again to the TBR list. It is a mess down here because I do keep a lot of my Etsy packaging stuffs down here, so let's go on to the next shelf. The books that I still need to read are Ace of Shades by Amanda Foody, Walk on Earth a Stranger by, I believe, Ray Carson, The Winner's Curse by Marie Rodkowski, and have a look at how similar these covers are. This is a total ripoff, but I have actually read Crown of Midnight. I read The Sculptor, and the four books down there I also need to add to my TBR. And then on the bottom of this bookshelf, I have all of my green and yellow books, and I will show you the ones that I haven't read right now. So from that pile, I still need to read A Pinch of Magic and A Sprinkle of Sorcery, both by Michelle Harrison, Super Super Shiny Clean by Juno Dawson. I have only read one other book by Juno Dawson, but I loved it so much, and I cannot wait to explore more of her work because I feel like she's gonna be a new favorite of mine. I have It Only Happens in the Movies by Holly Bourne and Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matt. Staying in the contemporary lane, we have The Serpent King by Jeff Zentner, and the other book that I still have is Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia as well. On to some fantasy, I have A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow and Hollow Pox, The Hunt for Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. The last fantasy book that I have is The Name of the Wind by Patrick, 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 I can't speak, Rothfuss, and then the last book on the shelves is A Murder Mystery, which is The Last of August by Brittany Cavallero. Adding 11 books to my physical TBR and by only looking at this bookshelf right here, I already have 73 books. Now let's scoot you over <laughs> and we'll be having a look at my second bookshelf right now. I will take you a bit closer and I'll see you in a little bit. I have The Black Prism by Brent Weeks, Truth Witch by Susan Denner, Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo, The Knife of Letting Go by Petrick Ness, and all of these books here on the pile as well, making this shelf add 13 more books to the list. Then we are going on to the next shelf, the first one being The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Mass, Beyond a Darkened Shore by Jessica Leake, Lake? Leak? I don't know. <laughs> the Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. Air of Fire by Sarah J. Mass. The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. The Merceries by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. This tiny book, in contrast to the others, a Fable by Adrian Young. State of Sorrow by Melinda Salisbury. Salisbury? Oh my god, why am I so bad at pronunciating authors' names? The other book that I'm currently reading, Space Between Us by Jamal Aflatuni. I have read parts of Love for Imperfect Things by Heyman Sunim, but I've never really finished Finished it. So this is definitely one that I should be continuing on with soon. Let's move on to the right and continue on with Gemina by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Full Disclosure by Cameron 
Garrett, and then the book next to it is Murder Most Unladylike by Robin Stevens, Stay Gold by Tobley McSmith, Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Albertalli, The Way Back to You by Michelle Andriani and Mindy Scott. Next we have If I Am Being Honest by Emily Wibberly and Austin Sigmund Broca, and the last two books here that we have on the shelf are Blood Moon by Lucy Cthu, and then the last one is Geekerella by Ashley Poston. And then for the last, like, lowest shelf, I will be showing you my face again because it's really difficult to get down there and film it properly. That second shelf added another 19, if I was correct, books to the list, which um, makes sure that I don't leave past the 100 number now. So, you know, let's continue on with the last shelf here. We have The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett with The Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo, but I will soon be buddy reading this together with Mel from Mel Reads, so it's gonna be checked off from the list very soon. When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandea Manon and Jellico Wrote by Melina Mc... M wait, Marchetta? Marlena Marchetta. Dear Martin by Nick Stone and A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. The latest book that I received in my fairy loot box, which is Master of One by Jada Jones and Denny Bennett. I do not have a lot of like co-authors or how do you call that when two people write together. I do not have a lot of books that feature that. And then I have Taylor Jenkins Reid book Forever Interrupted and Nocturna by Maya Motanya. I think Oh my god, so bad for pronunciations, I'm so sorry. Then the last couple of books here on this shelves are Holding Up the Universe by Jennifer Niven. Now I can say her name. Then we have Uprooted by Naomi Novik. All About Mia by Lisa Williamson. Rainbow Rowles' book Carry On. A classic, I don't know if I will ever get to this one, but it is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. And last but definitely not least, Felix Ever After by Kaysen Callender. Okay, let me do the math for this shelf as well. <laughs> shelf number two adds 49 books to the list. Shelf number three is the shelf that features all of my favorite books. Now some of them I haven't read yet but I have loved the rest of the series and I feel like I'm gonna love the sequels as well. Or books that some of my favorite authors have written that I haven't read yet but are definitely on my TBR. It is definitely like a messy shelf when it comes to color coordination, but these are my favorites. I have The Burning God by R.F. Kuang, the third book in the Poppy War trilogy. The highly anticipated, really popular The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson, and the last book here on this shelf. Wow, this one was a quick one. <laughs> and that is A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah G. Mass, the third and final book in the Akatar series trilogy. There are more books coming out in this world, I know but just talking about the trilogy right now, which adds four more books to the ongoing list. And right now we are gonna go on to this bad boy over here, which is my TBR cart. I basically just use this as a bookshelf as well. So let's count this and then we know the total amount of number of physically owned unread books. I feel so bad. <laughs> Okay, like I said, the last shelf we'll be having a look at is my TBR card. I do have books added on double of the size sometimes. Let's just get through it. <laughs> Never Night by Jay Kristoff. Even The Darkest Stars by Heather Fawcett. Lately, this book has been catching my attention. It just looks so perfect for the winter times. I know that this is a fantasy duology and we need more duologies, okay? The Sacrifice Box by Martin Stewart. Vicious and Vengeful in the Vicious duology, both by V.E. Schwab. The stunning, beautiful fairy loot edition of Star Daughter by Shveta Takrar. Wondersmith by Jessica Townsend, the second book in the Nevermore series, which I will definitely be getting to in February because I'm co-hosting a read along for it together with Olivia from Olivia's Catastrophe. And then I have, I believe that this is an essay collection of James Baldwin's work called Dark Days. Then we have Wild Spark by Vashti Hardy. Oh, it's so pretty. Ooh. Normal People by Sally Rooney. These Violent Delights. And then the last book that I have on like the top shelf of my TBR cart is The Sherlock Chronicles, written by Steve Tribe. This is like a nonfiction behind the scenes of how the series came to be, which is one of my faves. Oh my god, Benedict Cumberbatch is perfection in this series. Writing down 
12 bucks. Now let's go on to the second layer of the cart. I'm gonna take them all out first because it's a little difficult because of like the height with this thing. So the books that I have here are Wicked Like a Wildfire by Lana Popovic, Natasha Nagon's Girls of Paper and Fire. We have Autobiography by Christina Lauren, My Lady Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. I've been intrigued by this one so much, mostly because this doesn't seem like my type of genre, but I've heard that it's so funny, so maybe I should pick it up sometime soon. Two books in a middle grade series. Here we have Cog's Heart, Co Cogs, not with a CK, <laughs> and Moonlocked by Peter Bunzel, Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Rini Edo Lodge, a highly, highly damaged copy, I don't know if you can see, of Song of the Current by Selva Tol Tolkser, and then we have The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert, and lastly, They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. You guys aren't able to see, but here I have the third and last layer of the cart, and then we know the exact total amount of books that I still need to tackle. <sighs> and it would come to no surprise to you that I need to read almost every single one of them. <laughs> because I am me. Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow. Language of Thorns by Lee Bardugo, but I will definitely be reading this one before the Netflix show comes out. These are like short stories that take place in the Grisha universe. The Explorer by Catherine Rundle. Oh, this is such a pretty book. A Skinful of Shadows by Frances Hardinge. Then I have The Shining by Stephen King. This book looks deceptively small, but it's like 600 plus pages. Eve of Man by Giovanna and Tom Fletcher so pretty, the gold. I love it. God's Grave by Jay Kristoff. Want by Cindy Pond. Mirage by Zamoya Dowd. Heart of Thorns by Brie Barton. Iron Cast by Destiny Soraya. Soria? Soria. Dumplin by Julie Murphy. These Rebel Waves by Sarah Rosh. Skyward by Mr. Ren Sanderson. Justina Ireland's Dread Nation. Then we have the first two books in I believe a sci-fi quartet, The Long Way to a Small and Angry Planet, and A Close and Common Orbit, Orbit, both by Becky Chambers. And then guys, oh my god, the last book that I still need to read is Our Dark Duet by Victoria Schwab. I will put all the books back in the cart and then I will present you my very, very shameful amount of physically owned unread books to you. If I could do the walk of shame right here and right now, I would do it because I own 165 books that I hadn't read at the start of 2021. In January, I did read six books. You can go and watch my recent reads video if you haven't checked that out already. I will leave a link somewhere here up on the screen. I noticed now that three of the six books that I read in January I didn't add to the list because some of them I am already considering to unhaul or I simply just didn't count them so I only get to take off three books of the total amount of unread books that I own and that is because I read Blood Moon, I am currently reading Space Between Us, and I am also reading One of Us is Lying. So that brings the number down <laughs> to 162 books. Taking into consideration that I read about 40 books every single year. It would take me about four years to finish reading all of these books. So let's say that in 2022, I want to get down to, I want to set the goal kind of like high for me so that I can hopefully motivate myself to actually do it. So next year, I want my physically owned TBR to be down to a number of 130 books. This was such a confrontational video because this made me realize that probably over half of the physically owned books, I haven't read those which is insane to think about. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. Please let me know in the comments down below how many of your physically owned books you haven't read as well. Maybe I will feel extra bad, but maybe I will also feel a little bit better about my own number. And if you have watched this video until the end, applauding you because this is probably gonna be a long one to edit, but also to watch and comment the stack of books emoji because it feels only only fitting for how many books I showed you guys today. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!